Hi, this is Jethro from Huey Marine. We're just doing a short video about installing a solar system on a small tinny. And uh, firstly, so why do I want to do it? Well, I've upgraded my motor. I've got this one here at the moment, which is pull start, and I'm going to electric start and electric trim and tilt. So I need a starting battery, uh, whereas this has been pull start. Uh, and so the only requirement I've really had for a battery is to run a sounder and a, a GPS. So up until this point in time, um, I've had a tiny little battery like this. This is about 10 amp hours, uh, this battery. I just had this mounted on the seat. Uh, and then um, this was my uh, sounder. Now that little battery, um, even though it's only 10 amp hours, it's gonna run this for eight to 10 hours of fishing. So this um, particular thing draws about one amp hour. It's a combo sounder, it's color. Uh, sounder and GPS so you know other sounders are probably going to be doing similar things maybe the screen size might impact that slightly I'm not really sure but anyway I can get out for eight to ten hours of fishing I normally don't go fishing for more than three to six hours in a tinny like this so that's been more than ample but now that I'm going to electric start I need something with um, some cold cranking amps enough uh, to turn that back turn that uh, motor over uh, and also run my um, thing. So at this point in time, I've just been using a tiny little panel like this and putting that on the tabs of that battery. Uh, and I can charge that up very slowly, obviously, because there's not much power coming out of this, but that's been enough just to top it up. Um, but this time I'm going to go for a slightly bigger solar panel fixed to the boat. And I'm also going to have a, um, a solar charge controller uh, as part of that system. So uh, it really is horses for courses. I mean, I've done other installations on, for example, um, had a 35 foot um, launch uh, and we ran two 200 watt panels on that through an MPPT controller, which is uh, superior, um, but I don't think we need it in this particular case. But anyway, in that particular case, we're charging, you know, three 200 amp hour batteries, running fridges, TVs, uh, you know, CDs, lights, um, stuff like that, as well as your sounders and all the rest of it. Now, of course, even in that situation, once you start the boat, uh, your motors are charging it anyway, or charging the battery anyway. And that's another reason why, um, you know, I don't need a particularly big system on this boat because my, my new motor has uh, charging capacity too. So while that's running, that's charging it. So this is really just to top the battery up when the boat's not active. And that's the main thing that I'm doing it for is because uh, if I keep this battery on charge, uh, when it's not being used and so on. My experience is, is that a battery will last for up to about 10 years if you've got it on constant trickle charge. And that's the experience with a lot of people uh, down at the yacht clubs and that that I talk to. So, um, so that's pretty well it, and we'll get started on the job. Okay, so what have we done so far? So I've mounted this little solar panel on the top of the boat. Okay, this is a 20 watt solar panel. And as you can see in the background, I've still got the box there for the PWM solar charger. So I've put that on there. Because I don't like drilling holes in boats, what I've used is I've used uh, Sika 291, and I'm not sponsored by these guys. Uh, it's just a good product. Okay, so I went and bought some uh, little bits of uh, aluminium tube from the local hardware shop. I've glued that on there, and then, sorry, Sika flexed it on there with 291, and then I've also put it along the boat there to save me drilling any holes. Now, if you're wondering about how strong that is, I can push it like that and the boat's moving but at the same time it retains its elasticity if I want to take it off later I can scrape it off or use a, um, a, uh, a razor you know or a Stanley cutter or something like that so I've mounted that there and then what I've done here in this particular boat is I've put a little PWM controller there actually you can't see it too well but that's it there we might get a better shot from the other side now why have I gone for PWM? Basically it's cheap and it's going to do the job for what I require. So that's a better look at it there. Um, a 20 watt panel like that is going to generate about 1.5 amp hours. If you're lucky that PWM's going to uh, make sure that it's a uh, PWM solar controller. It's going to make sure that uh, the battery doesn't get overcharged. I'm going to run some cabling down here back to where you can see I've installed a battery box on the back. That's the old pull start motor, not the electric start on there. But um, take that back. I've also got the mount there for my um, GPS and sounder. So I can attach that um, pretty quickly uh, to there and it's nice and close to the battery. Now again, I don't like drilling holes in, um, 
in boats, in aluminium boats in particular. So I've just used a bit of Sika 291 on that, uh, and that means I can take that off later. And in fact, I'm going to put some sort of little cover over the top of that, and that's not been easy to find, a cover that um, uh, would cover that from the weather, but uh, hopefully I might find something, because I don't think we really want to leave it exposed. Um, and we'll, we'll you know, see this later. I mean, you can see lots of DVD, sorry, lots of videos, lots of YouTube stuff about the functions of these PWM, but it will show you charge and how much, how many amps are being generated, how many volts are coming through the actual panel. So um, yeah, we'll just wire this up in the next part of the video and talk a little bit more about um, the pros and cons of what we need to do. So this is the motor that I'm going to put on that little dinghy. It's a 2019 Mercury EFI 30 horse. And as you can see here, we've got, uh, you know, charging facilities anyway. Um, that obviously connects onto the battery down here. Uh, this is a particular battery that I bought. Uh, it's a marine battery and, uh, and uh, obviously needs something that's got enough cold cranking amps to, um, to uh, crank over that particular motor. And this will be ample. Okay, so back to the installation. So I've got the battery in the boat now into the battery box and uh, by the way that's the only area where I did uh, use a couple of screws so I've screwed the bottom into the seat of the boat. This is a fair bit of weight in these batteries. I've got the battery connected up here and this is going to run back to the solar panel but what I've done is I've actually put a, an Anderson plug on there which just gives you a little bit more flexibility so if I want when I'm you know don't need the battery to start the boat I could run a little fridge off that or if I was taking the trailer off road then I could use a you know connect up a compressor and pump the tires up and down that sort of thing so it just gives you a bit more flexibility and also means I can you know connect the battery from the solar panel when I want to so this is the other uh, Anderson plug that's going to go into the battery there and uh, this is um, rated at 16 amps uh, the this wire and I'll just uh, run that up the side of the boat there you can see and uh, that needs to be connected into the uh, solar panel at the front there okay so now we're just um, connecting the battery up to the solar controller so that's there it's all pretty clearly marked the light's not all that good probably but anyway it's just a negative and positive there and then we've got to uh, connect up the solar panel to the charge controller too now one of the issues that i noted is that you know i cut the ends off these they had these controllers on sorry these uh, joiners solar joiners on the end and um unfortunately i chopped them off and i thought oh hell how am i going to know which one's positive and negative but it's actually pretty easy because all you need to do is to uh, use a uh, multimeter so just set your multimeter to the normal setting for testing a battery on you know 20 volts or something like that and if you touch on the ends the negative and the positive on each of the solar panels there then it's going to tell you if you've got it around the wrong way i think also if you put it in the wrong way then it's going to tell you on the screen of the solar um, controller uh, if you haven't got a um, if you don't have a multimeter but uh, but yeah and the other thing I should mention is that uh, the the order to do this is is the battery first and then the solar panels because they're actually generating charge in fact I just put the multimeter on I haven't got three hands I can't do it again but it's generating about 19 volts out of that little panel at the moment Okay, uh, and then if you're going to put any load on there, which is the third um, little area down here, which I'm not going to use on the far right, um, that's if you want to run something directly through the solar panel. I mean, it'd have to be pretty small, I should imagine. Or oh, then again, you could probably run your uh, sounder if this thing's generating one and a half amps and your sounder's only taking one, and then you've got the little USB ports if you want to charge your phone or use that for something else. So the final step now is just to um, connect those. Um, the solar panel into the solar charge controller. So now I've um, connected the two solar wires, the positive and the negative. So you can see now that the panel says there it's putting out 20.3 and the battery's at about 11.4, something like that. It's varying a bit, obviously, depending on the sun and the sun, we're up to 12. So everything's wired up correctly, but I couldn't work out why the solar controller kept on flashing on and off. Now I've traced it back to this fuse. So there's this fuse here, which was between the battery uh, and the solar controller. And unfortunately that little LED, which is meant to be like a feature of the fuse to show you that the fuse is working and it hasn't blown, 
that was flashing on and off and it must be um, confusing the solar controller because the co solar controller flashes on and off and I've just taken that out of the syst out of the circuit now and just put this directly to the battery and I do have a, uh, a normal type um, fuse here or fuse container and um, now the whole thing is working properly so just a word of warning don't use those fuses with the little um, LED uh, light on them uh, because it may uh, impact on your solar controller so now that the fuse issue is sorted out you can see that the solar controller is working fine uh, as I said there's plenty of stuff around the place that you can um, go through the functions and work all that out but it's pretty straightforward so although I've got a little bit of tidying up to do that's pretty well it and I hope it's been useful